today's talk, I'd like to introduce you to a remarkable Kerry man, Michael Donovan, also my uncle. My name is Michael Donovan and a very special welcome indeed to you, to the music makers. Michael Donovan was born in 1943 and he died in 2002. But what he did in that short time with his life was truly remarkable and left a lasting legacy not only on his family but on the country of Ireland itself both from a historical, cultural and political point of view. Michael left Ireland to join the priesthood in America and Pennsylvania and while there he discovered an intense love of jazz music. He was introduced to the black musicians, to the Dixie music, to the rock music and he also was very influenced by the American way of life and the American ideal and the American culture. What he got in America culture was music the performance, the theatrics, the charisma, how to be, you know, dramatic. And what he actually did was he was sort of, he was years ahead of his time. Master um, um, self-promoter, he was a master PR man, he was a master um, entertainer. He didn't have any problems promoting anything that was happening in his area. He, he actually set up an article for the Kerry's Eye and it was actually a forerunner to Facebook and Twitter because it would to say what was happening in the area and he'd mention friends and that he would have met or people that was that were out and about and he'd have pictures of people in the um the, the article and it was completely his own idea. Um Michael's main love in life was jazz music and especially uh Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley and many more. He delighted in sharing his music. Especially when he came back from America, he, he saw an opening for um, what was what we now know as uh, discos and they would have been called the hops in those days. He set up the first um, hop in Ireland in 1963, in um, St. Patrick's Day in, 19, in 1963. And he wasn't even sure how it would go, but he said he'd try it anyway. And after six months, he'd moved to a bigger location and was filling out three nights a week. He'd play all the local, all, all the latest records, and including um, the Beatles, as I said, Elvis, Frank Sinatra. Um, he would have been very um, instrumental in promoting um, local artists and Irish artists. He would have even brought Pin Lizzy and Rory Gallagher to Tralee, and he lost money on those gigs actually because people hadn't heard of them. But he was able to spot their talent and have the foresight to see that they were really amazing people um so he had a massive interest in film and he would have frequented the cinema house at least um five times a week if not more and when he was younger coming from a cultural uh, family his father was very musical his brother donald was in a band they would have lived across the way from the cinema and they would have gone to the cinema even twice in the one day he also had a very um, strong interest in philosophy and theology and that would have come from his time um, training to be a priest. But he carried forward his uh, spiritual beliefs and he would have gone to Mass every single day. Michael never drove but he didn't need to. He knew everybody in Trilly and everybody knew him. He was called the man about the town by the Kerry man and that was true. He would know everybody's name. He would be able to tell you where they lived, who their, peop their people were, everything about them, because he did actually care. Michael set up a, a radio station called Kerry Local Radio. We have a very special guest here in the studio with Kerry today, and his name is Dave Harper. And the they also had um, a sideline of the street radio, which would have been promoting uh, like events and advertising different uh, shops and different um, businesses, while also playing music of the day. Um, he did that for a long time and he tried very hard to get a legal um, license for that but there seemed to be a bit of political corruption going on in the background and it didn't happen for him at the time. So he was very bitter about this and he did actually go public about it and he even threatened to that he would that he'd go that he'd starve to death without this that he would he would not accept this and he would not take this line down. And so he set up a pirate radio station and broadcasted on the FM frequency. Michael was also a politician. He was 14 years 
in Tralee Urban Council and in, during that time he would have been the go-to person for um, if dignitaries were coming to Tralee and they would have been looking for somebody to entertain him, Michael was always the one to go to. Um, Michael was the first male model in Munster. He was, um, on the one hand, very liberal and, you know, very advanced in his thinking. And then on the other way, on the other hand, he was a bit um, influenced by the Catholic Church. And that would have been seen in the famous video that is now up in the RT archives, um, where he's opposing uh, Jane Mansell's visit to Tralee. And he speaks very candidly about it and she shouldn't be welcome to Tralee. Enough. But um, the fact that we have to watch this at this country, and it doesn't seem right to my mind, bringing an exponent of sex to Catholic powers. His style was uh, very influential. He would have been invited to different uh, sh clothes shops where they'd ask him to wear their clothes, and inevitably, at the end of the week, he would have sold the suit that he'd be wearing, or he'd basically have like hues um, forming around the block for people looking for whatever he was wearing. He'd also thumb up to Dublin to go to gigs and to get the latest records and the latest clothes and then bring them back down to Tralee and he'd sell them to whoever he'd meet along the way. When he went for the elections um, for the Tralee Urban Council, he decided to adopt a very American approach to the campaign where he would have hired um, his band members and they would have got on the back of the truck and they would drive around to the housing estates and they'd sing songs and he um, wrote his own version of New York, New York of where he would have sang like the elections are coming to town and vote for me and all this kind of thing and he got um, a very unique um, manifesto printed for the elections where on one side he had uh, Frank Sinatra and on the other side he had himself and his um, his motto, Frank Sinatra's motto is I'll do it my way and his motto was I'll do it your way. So it was very good. He had a love of nature and he also had a very keen interest in um, psychic uh, phenomenon and he would have set up um, the Psychic Research Society in the early 70s. He also um, would have set up kind of when he was very young the Kerry Rock and Roll Society, which they would have collected money for the first uh, records of rock and roll to be uh, distributed in Tralee. Michael's band was called West Coast Jazz, which was, of course, influenced by the West Coast music scene in America. Michael's memory lives on in his three children, Lorraine, Wayne and Andrea, and his grandchildren and his ex-wife, Mary.